It is my pleasure this week to introduce you to two gentlemen who are now joining me on uh, Channel Awesome. The uh, horror guru, Josh Haglund, and Count Jackula. Jack, they are, they are here tonight to fill in for the nonsense for uh, for Tara, seeing as she is. Gentlemen, thank you for, I know this was kind of short notice, so I appreciate it. Oh, pleasure to be here. Anytime. Okay, so everybody, there, there they are. I'm Hi, look, everybody. Looking at the chats reacting here. Apparently, they, they, they're more interested in the moth. Yes. <laughs> yes, Mothra has been let loose in this house. Yeah, it's trying to... And it's pissed. It's trying to take over. That's that we have we have Tara on and they're more interested in the cat. We have you guys on and they're more interested in the moth. <sighs> all right, so you are aware of how all this works, I take it. Indeed. Oh yes. Yeah. Well, we're we're gonna have the uh, that going. So you guys are gonna be on the site very very soon. Josh, you're coming up first, I think. I have no idea. I haven't gotten my email yet. But <laughs> when I do, I'll let you know. <laughs> we're so organized at Channel Awesome. <laughs> Am I going to be on the site? I don't know. Eventually. I, what am I doing? And I don't fucking know. I, I, what, what's going on? So, um, do you guys know what you're going to be doing for your inaugural videos? Yes, yes. I, I do, at least. I will be doing Evil Dead. Oh, God. <laughs> yeah, if, um, if I'm not able to get a uh, new video up by that time, it will be Invasion of the B-Girls. Because that has that glorious ending that yeah. everyone seems to really like. Yeah, you with the bee costume and <laughs> he almost didn't want to do it. I made him do it. Yeah, go yeah, big or go true. home. That's that's kind of what <laughs> yeah. you have to do with this stuff. You know, you either you either just sort of not do it, or you dress in a bee costume and you run around in public. And because who needs shame when you're making internet videos? Yeah, at the worst, you could have ended up on my show. So exactly. you know, it works either way. <laughs> All right, let me get this set up. So, oh, nope, that popped you up way high. I need to move you back down. I need, I'm need. i setting it up here so that I can give you uh, the link, pass those over to you. Hey, is this going to work? Stupid thing. Welcome to, the, welcome to the live end of my show here. I'm trying to make things behave themselves. Hooray! Technology. Do it live. Yeah. All right, is that going to work? Better work. There we go. All right, so, yeah, Evil Dead. What, are you trying to break the comment section on the very first day? That's my goal. Yeah, they're, <laughs> they're not going to they're, they're not gonna be very happy about that. I'm already, I'm, I'm, I'm going to be doing Highlander, and I'm like, I'm already waiting for the <laughs> lynchings, so. Okay, let us get the intro here. Each week, Catherine and the Radio Dead Air audience go out on the worldwide interwebs, find all sorts of horrible stuff back here for a little segment we like to call what the fuck is wrong with you and you know I, I yeah I, I'm gonna open on a brief one we're not gonna I don't think we really need to touch on this one to, for too long uh, this one comes to us from England and you know I, the funny thing about people with with, with English accents we, th we tend to think just because they have the British accent they're so much more intelligent and sophisticated yeah um, well, they're the ones who came up with spotted dicks, so, you know, very debatable. <laughs> but it's a classy spotted dick. <laughs> well, it, it we have a little bit of, of something from Bristol that shows just because you're British doesn't always know, doesn't always mean you know what the hell you're doing. <laughs> Workers misspell bus on Bristol Roadworks. Nailed it. Workers have managed to misspell the world bus during roadworks in Bristol. Bump stop was painted on the road surface in the old market area of the city. Bristol City Council were unavailable for comment about the mistake. So I feel bad for all those bump drivers. <laughs> Maybe they're trying to say pub and they did it back. <laughs> In the middle of the street. In the middle of the street. Yeah. Maybe it is a subconscious thing going on. Boy, I need a drink right now. Yeah. <laughs> Road beer. That's that's oh, the oh there you go. so nice combination. <laughs> so to officially get things off this week, it, when you were a kid, did you did you ever ride in the back of a pickup truck? Yes, yes, absolutely. Yeah. You're not supposed to Hell because no. that's you know there's no seat belts and shit. But we all did it. 
Well, well the best stories come from doing what you're not supposed to do. Yeah. Yeah, this guy saw that and decided to supersize it. <laughs> oh, dear. Well, then. Let's Man see. drove with nine children in the back of flatbed truck from Philly to Dorney Park. Wow. Man. Like the worst version of the Partridge family ever. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, get happy. <laughs> well, um. Uh... Come on, get happy, boys and girls. What the hell? I ain't got no singing in back that <laughs> He got to feed his children on a healthy supply of bugs. <laughs> I got one of the glowy kind. They're the best. <laughs> Man hauled 11 passengers, nine of them children, on makeshift benches in a flatbed truck from Philadelphia to Dorney Park on Sunday morning. None of the passengers, who were between 9 and 19 years old, were using seatbelts and were covered in blankets during the 60-mile trip on the flatbed. It just gets better and better. <laughs> Gustavo Duran Ocoa? I think it's Ocoa. 34 of Philadelphia was charged with nine counts each of reckless endangerment and having passengers in an open truck. And of course, this says so much about America right now. Police were alerted by a caller saying he saw a, quote, truck full of illegals. Uh, of course. Okay. Really? Do you think some, a coyote trying to smuggle illegal immigrants is going to put them in an open flatbed truck? Nope, they're not that dumb. Like, well, maybe maybe they were all getting ready for an audition for the remake of the Banana Splits or something. <laughs> I, 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 there's like a taco plate joke I could make. I just can't quite come up with it. It's this on benches. This sorry, the guy. This was an elaborate plan. This wasn't just everybody on the flatbed. No, this was okay. So we put the benches on, and then I cover you in the blankets, and it'll be fine. Hi, uh, yeah, oh, God. Sounds like a hick camp out. Let's camp out in the back of the flat bug while we're moving. <laughs> he had, like, probably had, like, a whiteboard for this shit. Like... <laughs> Oh God! Like I remember every time, like you were in the, I run the back of the flat, but it was always like, "All right, now duck down, and make sure nobody sees you, because otherwise we're gonna get arrested." But I might get arrested anyway, because it's gonna go ninety miles an hour down the freeway. <laughs> and God, this, this is worse than a pickup because there's no sides on a flatbed, so there's yeah. like between oh, you and the road, there's air. <sighs> and I've come to find air is not an effective barrier, not generally. Especially not when you're running into semis. It's, it's a, it's a, it could be a, it could be a tragic clown car accident. You know, like, <laughs> oh, jeez. <laughs> a clown car has walls. Yeah, true, true. You hit like oh, one God. pothole and there goes Timmy. <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna need another Timmy. Well, see, that's why you do a buddy system. Tuck and roll, you have son. Them all tied up together. <laughs> All right, so the heavier children, make sure you're tied to one of the skinnier children, just in case. Exactly. Everybody got your buddy. And then they'll drag race with real dragging. Oh, go. Oh, no. Asher Khan. Wait, was this Jerry Sandusky's newest scheme? Oh. Oh, that was bad. Uh, should be ashamed of yourself. But they're not. I love you anyway. Yeah, no. they, they watch my show, so they're not. So, um, how up are you guys on U.S. history? Uh, I went to high school. <laughs> yeah, that was a thing that happened. All right, what happened this week 200 years ago in America that was significant? Uh, uh we'll see. Um, uh, you got me. Hit us. Well... England burned down the White House. Oh. Which, you know, it's, it's not one of our prouder moments. But uh, don't worry, in case lots of people don't know that. But don't worry, England was very helpful on Twitter this week in letting people know. Okay. <laughs> the, <laughs> the English embassy apologizes for, quote, burning White House tweet. The British embassy in Washington is apologized after tweeting a picture of a White House cake Surrounded by sparklers commemorating the burning of the building 200 years ago. 
That's kind of like having uh, the Japanese send us a tweet of a sumo wrestler, like, fucking landing on a mile of Pearl Harbor. (laughs) (laughs) Dawn, 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 dawn. Uh, I, what, what, what was the thinking here? Was it really just like, hey, we are sending... Do something nice for America. <laughs> you just put it on fire. They like fire. <laughs> Everything's on fire. Well, so they did it wrong. If they wanted to do something nice for us, they had to blow up. The- <laughs> wow. <laughs> we'll send that. Well, yeah. Well, yeah. Because, well, I don't know if they could really top us. No one blows up the White House like American Hollywood. This, this is true. Yeah, we blow that up a lot. It's yeah. like one of our favorite things to do, if you notice. <laughs> kind of is. I kind wonder if is. that's a subconscious thing going on there. The offending tweet on Sunday read, quote, commemorating the 200th anniversary of burning the White House, only sparklers this time. Uh, why well, is it, it when, when, why is it when we get like all these supposedly upstanding and, and reputable s- sources get anywhere near Twitter? They keep doing this shit. It's because Twitter is a cesspool. Of bad ideas. <laughs> so we had the SpaghettiOs Pearl Harbor thing. You remember that? Yes. <laughs> SpaghettiOs commemorating Pearl Harbor. And we, we had the uh, the guy who tweeted the picture of the Challenger explosion on the 4th of July. He didn't know it was the Challenger exploding. <laughs> it, was, it was an honest mistake. Right? And that was that was like from, a, that was from like, uh, I think it was a magazine over in, in, in England. He didn't know that it, that was a picture of the Challenger blowing up. Uh, well, to be uh, fair, we in America like to blow up everything. I can see the mistake there. And the, the worst part is this is a British embassy. These are the people who we go talk to, you know, for diplomatic shit. This is not what we call diplomacy. This is the opposite. This is how wars start. Well, that would be amazing. It would be awful. <laughs> the, the war of the cake. <laughs> Would be like it'd be like a war on fortune. Like, oh. oh god, that's horrifying. <laughs> I don't. I just. I don't understand. Oh, but never let the it be. Outside, the cake looks There's delicious. No metric it does. You can apply to that. That makes that sound like a good idea. You know, like, no. Hey, guess what, boss? I'm gonna take a picture of a cake and put fire all around it, and tell the Americans we're commemorating the burning of the White House. How does that sound? Perfect. Go with it. Tweet that shit. Yeah, and you notice how whenever this happens, it's always an intern that does it? Yeah. It's always an intern. Interns hate everybody, apparently. Well, we knew that already. But, well, not to be... You ever been an intern? No. No. Oh, 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 oh. Yes. Yeah. You yeah. hate everybody. <laughs> well, you're doing all the shit work and not getting paid, so. Yeah. Well, you're getting paid in experience. Experience in delivering coffee. Perfect. <laughs> not to be outdone, um, members of Congress this week decided they wanted to fuck around on the internet, too. Oh, um, boy. Do you watch Orange is the New Black? Or are you aware of it? Oh, uh, I've never seen it, but I am very aware of it. I watched the first yeah. season. I'm not caught up on the second. Well, one of the uh, the actresses on there, she is transgender. And uh, apparently this became a priority over in Congress. Oh, wow. Uh-oh. Someone in Congress is messing with an Orange is the New Black Star's Wikipedia page. In Congress? Shortly after 10 p.m. last night, somebody from the House of Representatives changed the Wikipedia entry for Laverne Cox, a transgender actress who plays a transgender inmate, Sophie Brissett on Orange is the New Black. The entry originally said that an article in The Advocate, quote, touted Orange is the New Black contains the first ever woman in prison narrative played by a real transgender woman. But the anonymous elected representative or someone from their staff changed the line to a real man pretending to be a woman. Wow. The elected official or their staff also added a link to the National Review article published last month that claims Cox is, quote, not a real woman. And the problem is, this this is not the first... They had to ban Congress 
from making edits to Wikipedia because this is not what they're fucking with. There's even a Twitter account called Congress Edits that keeps an eye on the IP at Congress who keeps editing Wikipedia. So it is true. Trolls come in all shapes and sizes, even in Congress. Even in Congress. I... Well, nice to know that while they're not doing things, they can edit the Wikipedia page because this is what's important. These are the issues of the day that we need answers to. Congress has got to move on that shit. I, oh. Not immigration, not tax reform, not uh, corruption. not No, no, no. It's, it's Wikipedia. We could vote on this very important bill, but so, sorry, guys. I got, I got to finish editing this Wikipedia page. <laughs> Quick. Queers are doing something. <laughs> we gotta stop. <laughs> it gets worse, though. Um, there's, there's, the Wikipedia user may change the Cox's pages, who at one point in the talk page, in the talk pages, claims to be a congressional staffer working under the explicit permission of his or her boss. Also made a number of similar edits to other pages this week, complaining that these Wikipedia articles are quote too pro-trans. So someone at some congressperson said, I order you to go and edit Wikipedia. It's an encyclopedia it is the definition of neutral. <laughs> I, well, to be fair, Wikipedia is not exactly the best place to go for information. True. Oh, yeah. But I mean, <laughs> you don't expect Congress to be the ones. <laughs> no, you don't. Because they're on vacation now, too. Did you know that? They just went on vacation. Someone's working overtime. This, wow, I have had a hard day editing Wikipedia. Let's go on a month-long break, guys. <laughs> we we going to vote on anything? Nah, fuck it, we're gone. Wikipedia takes a lot out of you. Oh, God. Wow. I don't even know what to say to that. Just I'm tax dollars at work. I'm blown away that Congress had to have its IP blocked. <laughs> this is the second time. Second time. They blocked like, it for a month beforehand. And they're like, okay, you guys gonna be okay. No, come back. Stop doing that shit. Fuck. Wow. Just wow. I, I cannot. We elected these people. <laughs> yep, this is this is Not who the Congress we want America. The we deserve. <laughs> yeah. This is we this is our fault and we deserve everything yeah. we get. <laughs> This is, this is what we, this is, Jesus. We reap what we sow. And those of you at home who want to keep an eye on this shit, uh, go follow the Twitter account, Congress Edits, for more wonderful stuff that your tax dollars are paying for. Uh, so, all right, moving right along. Uh, have you ever had any issues with your significant other in, in that you want to do something, but they want to do something else? A little bit of yep. it, yeah. I've I've had that a lot. Um, the guy on our next story, and this makes me sad because it's from Manchester, which is where my girlfriend is from. The guy in this story had a novel way to solve that dispute. I, you could almost call it a Gordian knot solution. A chainsaw. Yeah. Uh, I man, didn't expect to be right. Man told, well, in a, in a manner of speaking, not a literal chainsaw, but that uh. could happen on my show. Man told girlfriend, I've been kidnapped to stay at house party. Wow. wow. Man who told his girlfriend he had been kidnapped as an excuse to stay out partying sparked an overnight manhunt. 32-year-old made his girlfriend believe he was being held hostage and that his kidnapper would not let him return until he paid a 50-pound debt. That's about $100. In fact, he was enjoying himself at a house party in Bolton in the early hours this morning. Girlfriend was beside herself, called the police speaking to his, uh, after speaking to his kidnapper on the phone, receiving a number of text messages. So not only did he tell her he'd been kidnapped, he had his mate get on the phone and text her some shit pretending to be his kidnapper. Here's what I always want to know, because this is not the first one of these stories I've seen where it's like, guy says, oh, I've been kidnapped. How, my question is always, how do you come back from that? <laughs> <laughs> That's sort of the nuclear option, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's just like, like, okay, so I haven't been kidnapped, so how am I going to logically get back home and get away with this lie? 
Well, on the upside, may, maybe he's forward thinking. Maybe, you know, if he does figure that part out, then he has the excuse that he was kidnapped for any argument ever afterwards. <laughs> Sorry, honey, I was kidnapped. I'm a little irrational. Again! <laughs> this is, I mean, it's like, this what is not an, this is, the only way this would ever work is on an episode of Friends. <laughs> you know? It wouldn't even work then. It gets, well, oh, it gets worse. If it was an episode of Friends, they would say that, and then they would actually get kidnapped, and it would be... Yeah. Twist. Well, it gets worse. More than a dozen officers began an urgent investigation, included house-to-house -house inquiries, checking closed-circuit television, analyzing mobile phone data in a bid to find him. A number of houses were searched, and a man was arrested on suspicion to kidnap. Police then tracked down the time waster at the party on Summer Street shortly before 1.30. So... What could have been wacky fun descended into, you know, this was like the fugitive. What? Wow. This so guy got... DJ did it. You know? <laughs> this is like a guy got a dude arrested. It's like, it's, it's like the weirdest version of speed ever. <laughs> he <partying. laughs> he parties under a certain level. He gets kidnapped, you know? Starring John Claude Van Damme. <laughs> Hallmark doesn't make "Sorry, I got you arrested because I faked a kidnapping" cards. They don't do that. But I. They should. I'm they should. Think there's a market for that shit because this is happening a lot. Oh. So while he was doing this, you know, actual crimes were going on, but no, no, the cops put out this dragnet to find his ass just because he wanted to stay out and not go home. I hope he was fined out the ass. <laughs> Every penny he's worth. Well, you know, I, 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 I hope his girlfriend just flat out broke up with him. What the hell? <laughs> yeah, this is that that this is pretty much the worst way to end your relationship. Uh, <laughs> it might seem like a good idea, but this is, you know, you, you might just want to go with. Point, how, at what? At what drink? Does it seem like a good idea? <laughs> That's exactly it. This is like, all right, how many shots? Does it like, you know what? That is good plan. 16, I, the magic number. I did not see how this could possibly go wrong. It's just perfect. It's, I love you. Somebody call my girlfriend. No, make that shit sound scary. We're going to make this work. Wow, a gallon of PCP. <laughs> <laughs> well, then this would have turned into a naked rampage. <laughs> <laughs> it's not Florida, so, you know. Well, fair enough. Yeah. Even though I've been to Manchester, Manchester can get a little bit scary. But it's not... God. Well, oh, speaking of, you know, places... You guys are out, out west, aren't you? Oh, yeah. yeah. And, California. And you have the, the forest fires. Or yes, wildfires, because you don't have a whole lot of forest. An and an earthquake. But yeah, you, you've got... Half the time these days, it seems like California's on fire. Yes. We're also yeah. in a drought, which is not making things better. Yeah, so it, it's probably not a good thing to do to um, start one of these fires and then brag about it on Facebook. Warm Springs woman who set 7.9 million dollar wildfire posted like my fire on facebook come on baby like my fire, oh, fire. all right <laughs> now i i mean i i've been hearing about people addicted to the facebook i now believe everyone <laughs> <is crazy. laughs> i i could have been worse she could have said flame on <laughs> go for the witty angle no no she needed to get the likes you had to click the like button also subscribe be sure to like and subscribe this wildfire um a warm springs woman who admitted to starting a fire in july 2013 told federal prosecutors oh my god she started the blaze by tossing a firework out of an open car window because her firefighter friends were bored and needed the work Yep. I, yep. Yep. I've I've had firefighter friends who say this happens. This happens. I think they need better friends. <laughs> yes. 
Really? Actually, yeah, really, really. It's it's actually a big problem. It's the main thing that their like internal affairs department handles is firefighters who set fires to create work for firefighters. There's a whole department that deals with those problems. My friend's a cop. I need to give him more work. Bang. <laughs> That is essentially the idea. Oops. Back in there. <laughs> Two days later, Sadie Renee Johnson, 23, posted, quote, like my fire on Facebook. By that time, the Sunnyside Turn Off Fire, you know it's bad when they name your fire. Oh, geez. Had grown to nearly 30,000 acres, threatening homes and livestock in the Confederated Tribes of Warm Springs Reservation. So this is an Indian reservation. Aww. Eventually. Wow. If you just, you just had to get worse. It eventually grew to 51,480 acres and took two months to bring under complete control at a cost of the Bureau of Indian Affairs of $7.9 million. I, I, I don't think we have enough crying Indians to make it. <laughs> It's weeping. Buffalo. It's oh my god. That was Walker, Texas Ranger. Wasn't it? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> sort of Walker, Texas Ranger, where I forget what happens, but something happens to upset the Indian reservation, and this big statue of a buffalo just has a single tear. <laughs> and this kid points and says, "Look, mom, the buffalo. It's weeping." As if you didn't get it, they had to have the kid point the shit out. But. Yes. We, oh, okay, people in the channel like setting fire to an Indian reservation? She's cursed now. That's not how it works. This isn't fucking poltergeist, okay? It's gotta be a burial ground. <laughs> Guys, you're not helping. Well, to be fair, it might be one now because of <laughs> Oh, Jesus. Oh, oh, Dude. Oh, sorry. Oh, 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 man. Right in the trail of tears. Oh. Yeah. oh going to hell <laughs> i cannot wait to yeah this got dark quick i can't wait to read the comments this week you guys we are making these guys bring them back <laughs> you guys are gonna have a hell of a debut can they punch a baby too <laughs> <laughs> first 10 comments are gonna be all about hey what about the indian shit man <laughs> oh, oh god no but just Read. Well, at least you didn't tweet like your roof. Your roof is, is on fire. Uh, this is so awful. I have to laugh and make fun of it. Like, oh my! What God. else can you do? Holy crap! It's just gonna be a little fire. They'll come out. They'll squirt some water on it. It'll be okay. You know, if if you're gonna start a fire to give your firefighter friends like you know more work, why don't you go the full nine yards and set yourself on? <laughs> Do the rest of us a favor. Right. You know, you can you just just set yourself on fire because, you know, that's that's being con you could the right to set a fire ends at someone else's nose. So set your own nose on fire. <laughs> then you're committed. <laughs> should, we should send Smokey the bear out instead of it. Just only you can provoke forest fighters. Just have him kick people's asses. That would be amazing. Just, I'd watch that video <laughs> just to get the. Uh, speaking of firemen, oh god, it gets worse. I feel I feel bad fire, for firemen this week because this last the last story, because of course this would need to be the last story this week. Oh dear, I don't have a segue. I really don't. I think the fireman thing is about as far as I can get. Something, something, something. Fireman, something, something. Penis. <clears throat> well, who hasn't been here? <laughs> Fireman called to remove ring from man's penis. You know, that that's not what a Prince Albert is. <laughs> You're doing it wrong, sir. Kota Baru firemen showed they were up for the job when they were called to remove a steel ring stuck over a man's private's parts. Zaki Let me get this straight. They, they had to remove a, his precious from his precious. I am sorry. No, I'm not. <laughs> I'm. I. I. <laughs> he broke I, Jack. I. I'm trying to figure out what the thinking was. 
Now, I can imagine a man being so bored. He's like, I wonder if I could fit that around my cock. I can get that part of it. It gets worse. Well, maybe he was proposing to it. I now pronounce you man and dick. It's possible, you know? Um, Zacchaeus Malley from the fire station said the ring, which was made out of stainless steel, looked like a vehicle spare part. <laughs> it just gets better. So he's just looking at it going, yeah, I'll put my dick in this. And you know what, people, we, it's a grand generalization that men are just dicks in search of a hole. And of course that's a generalization, but guys like this kind of make you go, no, really, they'll stick the dick in anything. Literally well, I, anything. I, I remember having to explain <clears throat> that to, um, back in high school, uh, when someone was trying to figure out, like, how gay sex worked. <laughs> and I was like, I don't think as a male, you have to be told what kind of things your cock will go in because you will just do it. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Apparently some people have to be told. Yeah. <laughs> well, he's doing it wrong. Let's <laughs> well, just trial and error, you know? Oh will my it God, there's a photo. That's <laughs> finally loaded. There is a photo. Yeah, they blurred some shit out, but that's a bunch of men all around your penis with bladed instruments and a flashlight. That's like a that's like a whole big like operation with dun dun dun, dun like heavy intense music and shit. Someone's mopping the guy's brow. Oh, man. <laughs> well, maybe this was for the pilot of his new TV show. Can he fit his dick in it? <laughs> Apparently, yes. And it was a bad idea. <laughs> <laughs> Will it blend? Is it a good idea to put this in a microwave? Can I fit my dick in it? YouTube sensation. When asked how the ring got stuck over the man's penis, he said he was unsure as he did not have details. <laughs> no, how do you forget that? No, no, that bullshit. You get something stuck on your dick, you know exactly how it got there. It's not like you just woke up one morning and it's like, what the fuck? No, 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 no. What's my dick doing in there? <laughs> oh, I, actually, I can't. I can't see that. I can't see it. The problem is, is it has to be followed by the words "was at gay orgy." Ah. <laughs> it's the only way that makes sense. But that doesn't seem to be the situation. I think you'd have better things to put your dick in in that case. Yeah, that's a good point. I also think probably if you're a gay orgy, you probably have more guys who know how to get that thing off. <laughs> A shit ton of Vaseline. Yeah. <laughs> Don't worry, I got this covered. Happens all the time. <laughs> Could be worse. He could have tried motor oil and then accidentally set himself on fire. People in the oh. channel. Okay, okay, this is a good one. People in the channel are like, dude, where's my cock? That's not a bad one. This is not what Beyonce meant. If you like it, don't put a ring on it. Oh. <laughs> yes. I applaud you, sir. <laughs> or madam. I didn't see who said that. This is just my. How bored do you have? This is this is this is a board on a level I don't think we have a scale for. All the board, all the board. You got to be the chairman of the board. Fuck's sake, get a hobby. Well, he has one now. It's sticking, sticking. Stick. <laughs> That's not a hobby. I like how this article specifies that that as of 1988, they are allowed to perform this type of rescue. <laughs> So there was a turning point <laughs> in which people were putting their dicks in things more often. You can't. Oh, I love this quote. You can't have shaky hands and you have to be very confident. When performing the I could just see this shot like an episode of ER all serious and shit. <laughs> oh, cock yeah, ring. You're doing that with this cock in, cock in his ring. Dun, dun, dun. Circumcised or uncircumcised? <laughs> uncircumcised. Ooh, get the forceps. <laughs> it's the B plot of the doctor who just keeps sleeping with everything. Yeah. <laughs> People are channeling like, what the fuck happened in 1988? That's, That's a, a good very question. good question. You know, all I'm thinking of is the is the kid in in uh, a Christmas story sticking his tongue on the light pole. 
which set off a whole bunch. Which porno set this off? Because it had to happen. Yeah, yeah. This this had to happen at some point if they're specifically allowed to do it. <laughs> Pornographic Christmas story, apparently. <laughs> Where's Flip? Well, actually, you know, I know where that lamp went. oddly enough, the kid who stuck his tongue on the flagpole in a Christmas story grew up to be a porno actor. I believe so. It, it all it all kind of comes. Maybe it's his fault again. <laughs> OK, so I guess the first thing we've learned this week is stop putting your dick in things. It's a very valuable lesson. It's, it's good to learn that at a young age, though. Yeah. There are a couple criteria, like, number one, can you have a conversation with it? Number two, can it give consent? <laughs> that second one's pretty important, because I know people can talk to their dogs, and I don't think we want that. No! <laughs> yeah, I think we should put that one up a little bit higher. <laughs> oh. uh, needs a certain amount of flexibility, I think. Yeah. Yes. We have to have, we literally, gonna, someone in my channel is going to write up guidelines for it's okay to stick your dick in this when... <laughs> and Trying the think pieces went wild. We learned this week that firemen, firemen's jobs suck, and their friends are dicks. Their Seriously. friends are assholes. Wow. That late, you're that, that weird place to put it on Facebook because suddenly all the firemen, you're never going to get friended again. Never. Mm. Um. We learned this week that The Boy Who Cried Wolf, not just a fairy tale, especially when you cry, I've been kidnapped. Yeah. Because the no, next time we... he, he does this, he's really going to be kidnapped and no one's going to come rescue him. <laughs> and then you'll talk about it on here. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> they don't want him back. They keep turning down the ransom. We learned that Congress does do a lot of things, just not legislation. Yep, I, uh, I, I, I think we need, I think we need new people in office if that's what they're spending their time doing. Yeah, if you have enough time to be sitting around editing Wikipedia and shit, you need, you're not doing, go away. Well, it sounds you're fired. like they're even, like, specifically, like, cruising Wikipedia for, like, pro-trans things uh, that the they thing can, is, like, like, edit. Yeah. Like, wow, that is, the thing that is, is I can, like, on a level I cannot... Consent. Are we going to have to set up like a commission on, on trolling? <laughs> on congressional right. trolling? Uh, congressional trolling? <laughs> We're going to have to get like a special counsel. The weird thing is like, I can understand if they were like caught editing their own pages. Like, right. Fuckers, but yeah. Orange is the new black. Like, really? That was the most important thing <laughs> you needed to chime in on? Congress, everybody. And finally this week, we learned that people will always take a bad idea and make it worse. You it's called the truck. internet. Yeah, this old pickup truck thing. God damn it. <laughs> <sighs> well, um, at least no one got hurt. <laughs> this time. This time, yeah. Oh man, were they strapped in? Or no, no, they weren't. They were just on the flatbed, under a blanket apparently, and benches or something. All I'm thinking is just a real sharp break, yeah. and it's just you slow mo with Ave Maria in the background. <laughs> just kids going through the air. They died doing what they loved. Ave Maria. They died the way they lived. Stupid. <laughs>